Good morning, River Ridge. My name is Erin, and I'm the Women's Ministry Coordinator serving here on staff. It's such a good time to be with you this morning. We just got back from our women's retreat yesterday <laughs> where we got to learn about being women of the word and the importance of scripture in our lives and how to observe it and apply it. And it was just such an amazing time, deepening, deepening our connection with God and then growing in connection with others. And I love the community that we have at River Ridge. And whether it be your first time or you're visiting with us for a while, we would love to connect with you. So in the seat back pockets in front of you, there is a connect card. If you could fill that out and you can drop it in the boxes as you leave, or I encourage you to stop by our guest service table out front where one of our team members would just love the opportunity to connect with you. So if you can stand as we prepare our hearts for worship. In Matthew six, it talks about the birds of the air and the lilies of the fields and how they don't toil or spin and God cares for them and how much more he cares for us. And then he sums it all up in Matthew 6, where it says, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. So let's seek God first this morning in worship. Welcome to the Ridge. Hey.
the Lord a shout of praise. Come on.
got the flower and all of them beauty. I don't have to wonder, you know what you do.
Tetra. We speak your name over this room, over this place. We love you. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom
And I just pray that everybody was just able to receive that song. And it's nothing of us that we sang it or who wrote it. It's all your words and we're just delivering them because you give us the opportunity to. So I just pray that they just touch every heart in here, knowing that no matter what they're in or where they are, that you're there and that there's power in your name, there's healing in your name, there's deliverance in your name, whatever it may be, they just need to speak the name of Jesus and it will all be okay. Thank you, Jesus. Let's give Jesus, let's celebrate Jesus' name one more time. Awesome. You guys can go ahead and take the seat, your seats, but make sure you welcome someone into church this morning. We're gonna transition our time into a time of worship through giving. And this Sunday is actually our Dollar Club Ask Sunday. And Dollar Club is just near and dear to my heart. And it's just a special way that we get to go in our community and we get to be a blessing to someone. And Dollar Club is just one of the many ways that we can serve due to your giving, whether it be we can go to women's conference or have our women's retreats or what we do here with kids on Sundays or in our students. It's all possible because of your generosity. And I just wanna thank you for that. And there's multiple ways that you can give, as you can see on the screen. You can give by cash or check or you can um, give online or you can text that number on the screen. Let's pray for our offering. Jesus, thank you so much that we just get to come here and experience um, just being together with a community, Lord, and we get to lift your name high and speak your name, Lord, that your name is power, Lord, that we just praise your holy name, God. And I just pray for this offering, Lord, that you would just use it to grow your kingdom, Lord, and just it would be used to lift your name high, God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm Sydney, and I'm here to tell you what's happening around the ridge. Parents, we have some incredible summer camp opportunities for your students and kids coming up this summer. Alpine Camp is a fun and exciting camp experience for kids 8 to 12 years old. To find out more information and to register your camper, go to riverridge.tv slash events. When registering, make sure you state you are the River Ridge Church Taze Valley to be placed with your River Ridge friends. The deadline to register is May 31st. Middle and high school students will not want to miss a merge summer camp. It'll be June 10th through the 14th at Summit Bechtel Reserve. Visit EmergeCamp.com to learn more and sign up. Our Foster West Virginia ministry serves foster, adoptive, and kinship families from around our area. Over the last couple years, our care communities have served 11 different families and over 19 foster children with a total of 76 trained care community volunteers. We recognize that not everyone is ready, willing, or even able to be foster parents, but there are more foster and kinship families in our area that we have a heart to serve. We believe that everyone can do something. So find your something by praying for our foster kids and families in our area, signing up to be a care community volunteer, or purchasing high need items from the designated Amazon wish list to help our supply closet. Learn more and get involved at riverridge.tv slash Foster West Virginia. And now let's continue our series, Finding Fullness. Hey, well, good morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody's faces here in the house who made it. Hello to everybody who is watching out online. So glad that you're joining us wherever you may be. Uh, and again, just so happy that you are giving God this hour uh, of your time. And, I, and I'm praying, I know it's fruitful, I know it's beneficial, and I know that he's speaking and his presence is here, praying that you feel it. And then that continues on as we journey through uh, our series that, that we're in. And, and I wanna welcome you to week number two of our series that we are calling Finding Fullness 
fullness where, where we're looking at something that Jesus said in John 10, 10. Uh, and here it is. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and get those open to there. John 10, this is what he said. Jesus said that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And so Jesus is saying here that there is a life here for us as followers of him, as Christians right now, that is full. It can be a full life. And what Jesus meant by that is that we can have something with him on earth that is abundant and it is considerably more than we would expect or anticipate. And so what we're doing is we're working our way through John 10 to hear from Jesus and, and see what he says about the abundant life. And more important than that, finding it for ourselves, how we actually find it and live out of it. So last week we started uh, a chapter before that. We looked in John chapter nine, where Jesus healed a blind man. And at the end of chapter nine, that's where we stopped. Uh, Jesus said something at the end that almost sounded like a riddle, but in that, in there, he revealed uh, how we all have to start the journey of having the abundant life. And here's what he said in verse 39 of chapter nine. He said, for judgment I have come into this world and here's the real, so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. And, and so for us, what we looked at uh, as Christians is that there is a spiritual blindness that we can actually have as believers. And that blindness will cause us to not see the abundant life that Jesus is talking about. So the first step, if you have your notes out there, I listed the steps. The first step to fullness is actually to find it. We have to overcome our spiritual blindness. Uh, but then at the, at the end of chapter nine, the church guys come in with what Jesus said there. These are the guys that, are, that thought they were closest to God, that, that would say they knew God and loved him the most. Here's what they said to Jesus. They said, wait a minute, Jesus, are you saying that we're blind? And so where we're gonna do is we're gonna continue this. We're gonna be in John 10. We're gonna be in the beginning if you found your way there. We're gonna read the first four verses as Jesus responds to that question they asked. Here it is, verse one. Jesus said, very truly, I tell you Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. <clears throat> And the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. All right, so what we just read there is how Jesus answered their question of Jesus, are you saying we're blind too? And he answers them by giving us and them a lesson on shepherds and sheep. That's what he does. He gives a lesson on shepherds and sheep. And with that, what he's doing is he's taking us to the next step of the abundant life, which is this. Here it is, that if I want to have the abundant life, I need to act like a sheep and I need to let Jesus be my shepherd. That's the next step in the progression of finding the full abundant life. Now, now here's what we're gonna, I wanna leave this up here for a second because here's what we're gonna find today. Today, we're gonna find out that in these two directives that I put in front of us, there is a lot of separation here with Christians who say they have the abundant life and those who are struggling to find it. And here's why. Because in order to act like a sheep, uh, it takes awareness, it takes acceptance, and it takes humility to be able to say, yeah, I'm a sheep. And also in order to let Jesus be your shepherd, it actually takes a commitment to really letting go of a lot of things. And, and it takes a surrendering of our lives. That's why it's a challenge to find. So we're gonna tackle these as we go today. So the first challenge that we have is seeing that you are a sheep. And why this is a challenge is this, because I mean, do you really want to be a, who wants to be a sheep? Nobody wants to be sheep. Sheep is not first on your list uh, if you are allowed to pick a spirit animal, everybody. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're way down there, right? We are picking things like eagle or cheetah or lion or something like that. We're not picking sheep because there's nothing exciting about a sheep. It's a sheep. And, but here's what we're saying. Jesus says though, that that is the animal that we should most associate ourselves with. Okay, so here's the question. Why? Like, why does Jesus compare us to sheep? Well, we're gonna take a look for a few minutes uh, at sheep because uh, as I discovered, there are a few things about sheep that I think Jesus would want us to understand. 
So this week what I did was uh, I got on a few shepherding websites, okay? I got on a few websites uh, that helped me understand some similar qualities who have them. And yes, there are shepherding websites out there. There are way more out there than you think exist, everybody. I'm telling you, I got in the weeds of this, all right? So if you ever want to be a shepherd, there are plenty of resources out there for you. Just look it up. What, is, what do I need to be a shepherd? Tons of people have tons of things to say about it, okay? So, and I mean, the videos that I watch, amazing, some of these things, the, the, the relationship they have. So, I mean, if you have a few hours to kill, there's worse things to look at on the internet, okay? I'm just saying, uh, but pretty neat. So, so here's what I found as I was reading up and, and looking into shepherds and sheep. Uh, if you're taking notes, here's the first thing that I think Jesus would want us to know about sheep is that sheep have a wandering problem. Sheep have a wandering problem. So one thing that I read, and it's pretty clear as you see, or if you've ever encountered sheep, the thing about sheep is that they want to be together. They want to be uh, in a herd. It's kind of their nature. They want to be all together. They don't want to be by themselves. Uh, but here's the thing, even though sheep are drawn to each other, they also have a huge tendency to wander off, okay? That was like all over the place that I was reading material on that. And here's why. Here's why they have such a big tendency to wander off, because what sheep do uh, is they'll just put their head down and they'll start grazing and they won't even pop their heads up. They'll just keep eating. In fact, they'll eat until they die. Like they're like goldfish like that. So they'll do that and they'll start eating. And what happens is they'll start wandering off and then all of a sudden they'll kind of look up and they'll go, huh, this is where I'm at, I guess. Like that's what happens. And they might've wandered off a whole lot of, of distance before they knew. And, and so they're not, sheep aren't looking up from time to time going, oh, okay, I'm veering off a little bit. No, they don't do that. They just, they are so single-minded about grazing that they don't know that they're where they're not supposed to be. So they have wandering problems. You know, I wonder if you can relate to that. I wonder if you've ever gotten there, if you've ever had a time where, where you feel like you finally were able to poke your head up out of the fog and the chaos of your life and you went, how did I get here? You ever do that? How do we get to this place? I mean, I feel like our head's down. We're only down for just a minute. How did we get this far into believing that this was what life is about? Have you ever gotten, how about this? Have you ever gotten so single-minded on something? And it's not even necessarily a bad thing, but it's just not the thing. And it causes you to wander off of the thing that is more important that you should be close to. And it's not just God. It's things like, you know, maybe your family or, or your marriage or your integrity or, or whatever you would say is important. Prophet Isaiah says this about it in Isaiah 53. He says that, that we all like sheep, all of us have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. And so, so when Jesus says that you're a sheep, Here's what he wants you to know. He wants you to know that just like a sheep, you're prone to wander. You're prone to wander. And so Christians who have the abundant life, we're gonna keep looking at that. Abundant life Christians, they know this about themselves. They're not surprised about it. In fact, what they do is they accept the idea and they say, no, I'm a sheep and I know I'm prone to wander. So that's the first thing I think he would want us to know. Here's the second thing is that sheep have an image problem. They have an image problem. So like I said before, I mean, I mean, have you ever looked at a sheep and got scared? I don't know, you, maybe you have. If you have, you need to get out more, everybody. Like I'm saying, like, the point is this, that you should not look at a sheep and fear for your life, okay? Uh, because on the spectrum of fear, sheep are on like the bunny end. They're on the bunny end. There's like uh, puppy dogs, bunnies, and then sheep, okay? So that's, that's like where we're at. Uh, in fact, like when someone isn't able to sleep, what do you tell them to do? You tell them to count, not sharks, but sheep, okay? And why you do that is because nobody is scared of sheep. And you and I are like that. We don't want to admit it, but we're as vulnerable as they are. I think a lot of us try to live life like we're not vulnerable. We, we try to put this armor on ourselves. We, we bow up. We act like we got it all together. We have all the answers and things like that. And we kind of, we plow through life like we have this battering ram on our heads or something. Like, you know what? I think a lot of times we act more like rhinos. But, but here's what I would tell you. J Jesus didn't say you're a rhino. He says you're a sheep. He says that we're way more vulnerable than we think. And we're not as tough as we look. There's actually a verse in the book of Matthew and it's actually a skipped, it's skipped over because of what the next verse says. But in Matthew nine, I just found this really interesting. Uh, Jesus, it says that Jesus was going through all these towns and villages and he was healing people and, and teaching them and proclaiming the kingdom of God. But look what it says in verse 36 of Matthew nine. It says, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. 
And you know, I looked this up, I got really um, curious about this and I was wondering if he was being specific, but here's the thing, he wasn't talking about specific people. In here, he was talking about humanity in general. He's talking about you and, he, and he's talking about me. And you know, maybe we're starting to see some things here about sheep that, that, that are easy to admit. So, so we, we have a, a issue with our image. We don't want to admit it. We don't want to like that. So, so we have a, a, an image problem. And abundant life Christians, see, they know that about themselves. They don't confuse their condition. They say, no, 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 uh, I, I'm a sheep and I have uh, vulnerability. I'm more vulnerable than I think. Here's the third one. And, and again, maybe we're starting to see some reasons why it's harder for people to find the abundant life. Here's the third one. The sheep have a dependency problem. They have a dependency problem. So when I was uh, jumping around on the shepherding sites, uh, I got on a few forums and here's what somebody said in a for, yes, I got on forums, okay, everybody anyways, it was helpful, but here's what a shepherd was talking about in one of the forums, uh, and it, it was interesting to me, but they talked about how this herd mentality of sheep works, uh, but what, because once you get them going in a direction, here's what, they'll actually end up kind of blindly following each other. They'll just eventually follow each other. And so something that shepherds need to be careful of uh, is the sheep get going and they're moving together. Uh, they'll follow each other blindly unless the shepherd is calling out to them or, or guiding them or signaling to them. Uh, and there are stories that they were sharing of sheep just, just jumping off cliffs, just one by one, just constantly falling down because they'll just blindly follow another one, one another. And you know, this idea of sheep following one another like that, it just got me thinking about us a little bit, everybody. You know, because I mean, I think for us, like, I think we're way more easily influenced than we think. Can't, can't we? I mean, we could be swayed, we could be convinced, we could be suckered in to so many beliefs and ideologies and we will follow people uh, and things way more easily than we think sometimes. But we, again, we think though that we're the ones who make our own decisions. We're independent and you know, no one could ever influence us, right? But gang, listen, we are such pushovers sometimes. I mean, do you ever wonder why companies spend billions of dollars on advertising? Let me tell you something, they don't like spending their money. That's not why they do it, right? They do it because they know that all it takes for us sometimes because we're more like sheep than we think is just a 30 second ad to get us to buy it or try it. 30 seconds and we're like, oh, I'll try that. You know what I mean? Or just a billboard as you're zooming down the interstate just to get it, to get you to get it. Because we're like sheep, it's just who we are. Jeremiah the prophet says this way about God. This is what God said. God says, my people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray, turning them away on the mountains. From mountain to hill, they have gone. They have forgotten their fold. So again, abundant life Christians, the ones who know and are experiencing and living it, they understand that we could be easily influenced by other shepherds. And so they say, no, 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 I'm a sheep and I have influence problems. I have big influence problems. And so gang, this is, this is what Jesus say, is saying we are. And even though, here's what I wanna tell you, at first glance, it's not so flattering when you start to think about why he's saying we're a sheep. But here's the last thing that we need to know if you're writing these down, the sheep are also treasured, that they're treasured. So this is something that I found out, something that Jesus says to us constantly. See, to the shepherd, here's, here's what you need to know. Sheep isn't just an animal. Sheep is not just another animal. It's not a commodity to them. There is a relationship uh, that's forged and there is a commitment and a bond that shepherds have uniquely with his sheep. And, and in fact, I just wanna give you Jesus' own words on this, on, on how treasured you are as his sheep. Here's what Jesus says in verse 11. He says, I'm the good shepherd and the good shepherd, I'll lay my life down for you. That's what he says about you. So what Jesus is saying is that you as a sheep are his joy, that you're his treasure. And for Jesus, see, you, you don't have to wonder if he meant it because see, he showed that he backed that up for all of us by dying on the cross, laying down his life for us on the cross. You see, he showed us the value that we have, that we are indeed the treasure for him. And so that's what Jesus says about us. So, so here's what I wanna put forward today. This is what I wanna put forward because, because we're more like sheep than we think, right? Because we're more like sheep and because sometimes this life is tough and because sometimes we get lost and sometimes there's uncertainty in our life and, some, and because we are wired to actually follow, here's what I wanna put forward, everybody. You need a shepherd and I need a shepherd. We all need a shepherd. We need a shepherd who will help us more than harm us and who will lead us to the right path instead of putting us on the wrong path. And here's what I wanna put forward today. Jesus is saying, I'm that shepherd. 
I'm that shepherd if you let me be that shepherd. So what I wanna do for the rest of our time is I wanna take a look at Jesus's resume to be your shepherd. And what I wanna say before you, we get any further, you will follow a shepherd in your life. Don't think that you're not following one, but he's saying, I'm just gonna put forward why you should follow me. So we're gonna look at Jesus' resume uh, through the things that he says. The first thing, if you're writing down notes, is this, is the good shepherd, he calls you. He calls you. That's good to know. In verse three, here's what he says. He says that he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. And so, so he calls his own sheep by name. He knows you, he, he calls your name. And so if I'm a sheep, here's the good news about this. If I'm a sheep and I'm really listening for him, I can clearly hear Jesus because he says, I'm clearly calling you. That you can't, you won't mix it up if you're really listening to it, that he clearly calls us. And why this is important, here's why this is important. I just want us to fixate a little bit on the words and how he's saying what he says. Here's what you need to understand, everybody. See, there are other shepherds out there calling your name and calling my name. And they're doing it all the time. And don't miss the fact that Jesus says he is the good shepherd. He says he's the good shepherd because that means there are other shepherds out there that we can and we will be tempted to follow. But he's saying, I'm the only good one that there's no other good one except for me. And, and that's good news. But the good news too is that he clearly calls you. Uh, I was reading uh, back in Jesus' day because I want to understand like any differences between shepherding today and shepherding then. And other than like some of the things they carried, it's the same. They use actually some of the same traditional things. But one of the things that would happen a lot in Jesus' day is they would combine um, flocks. They would, they would like at night, they would combine two or three sheep flocks into this big sheep fold is what they called it. Uh, and they would let them kind of be out in this field together. But here's the thing that was really fascinating. There was no problem with shepherds getting their sheep uh, with, with, through the through the the, uh, sheep fold and coming and not mixing up any sheep because all they had to do is really wow all they have to do is just do their call they just have to make the call and it's like a clucking sound uh, and it's so neat because and, and all the other sheep will stay out and I actually watched a few videos on this today uh, there was one video I watched I know I got really deep on this stuff anyways I was well, really fascinating there's one video I saw and it's like fog where the front row is there's just nothing but fog you can't see anything and this shepherd comes out and he does this clucking sound it's like blah, 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 like that it is amazing. Cause then all of a sudden you hear, ha ah, like, and then <laughs> within five seconds, like out of the fold comes like 40, 50 sheep. It's, it's an amazing thing. And then in another video that I watched, there were like three or four people with this shepherd. Now this is what's really wild. This guy gave them his exact call. Okay, and one by one, and this, this video, you saw the sheep. They were out there. You could see them. And they were just like sitting like this. Like this. And the first person goes up there and they go, ah, oh, right, same sound. Not a head bob, not a blink on these sheep. Second person, third person, same call, sound in the exact same way. Then the shepherd comes up and goes, oh, and all of a sudden you see every head go. <laughs> and within five seconds, they just all start, it's wild. It's, I'm telling you, if you have time, just look that up. It's an amazing <laughs> thing. It's an amazing thing. And here's what I wanna say. This is what I wanna say. See, this is the way it should be for you and I as believers in Jesus. Are you hearing his voice that clear? Are you hearing his voice above every other shepherd's voice? Because there's other ones out there. You hear what I'm saying, everybody? Well, we're not bobbing our heads. We're not blinking to anybody else's call, but his, because he actually calls us that clearly. His voice should sound different than every other voice. And here's what I wanna ask you today, does it? Does it sound different than every other voice? So that's the first thing he does. Here's the second thing of why we should follow him, that, that the good shepherd also guides us, that he guides us. In Psalm 23, here's what it says. Uh, David says that he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. And so not only is Jesus's voice clear, and, and that's why we should follow him, but we should also follow him is because his direction is clear as well. His direction is clear. He gives us clear direction in our everyday lives. And let me tell you why that's good news, everybody. Why that's good news is because I don't know if you've ever noticed how exhausting it is to live life when you don't know the direction you're going. You hear what I'm saying? Like, you ever been there where you're just not really sure where, you, it's exhausting to be that way when you don't really know where you need to be going. But here's the great thing about Jesus, our good shepherd. See, he clears up exhaustion he clears up confusion by giving us clear direction. We don't have to wonder. We, we can just allow him to give us the direction that we need to go. You know, I would say that one of the most common things that I've heard or, or got, have gotten asked by people as a pastor is this, how do I know I'm really following God? How do I know in these decisions, how do I make this decision to know that I'm following God's will and listening to his voice? So I wanna quickly, if you have your notes, you'll see that. I wanna give you four things that Abundant Life Christians do when it comes to decisions that they make so they know they're following God's will. It's really easy, but I'm it's surprising how many don't do this. Here's the first thing that they ask 
when they make decisions is this, does it line up with God's word? Does it line up with the Bible? So they're just, here's what I'm gonna tell you, they're just black and white things that can be settled by looking at God's word. And listen to me, I know that seems easy enough, but look at me. You would be amazed at how many of us don't do what God says clearly to do. And you'd be amazed at how many of us do what God says clearly not to do. And then we stop and we wonder why we're not hearing him clearly, why, why we feel so lost or confused or feel God's peace and presence. And it's because of that. So here, for example, for example, should I have sex outside of marriage? No, absolutely no. Should I cheat on this to get ahead? No. Should I lie to get by? The answer is no, it's clear. So he's very clear on a lot of things. First Thessalonians 4, 3 says, it is God's will that you be sanctified. That's what he's saying. So if it's not making me more like Jesus, then the answer is no, it's very clear, very black and white. And I'm telling you that one right there, everybody will fix a whole lot of problems with a lot of Christians and the confusions that you're facing. Here's a second thing that they go through is, is it prayed over? Is it prayed over in this decision I'm making? Again, it seems like a no brainer, but again, I think prayer is sometimes funny because I think it's more assumed than actually done. Like, it's like, yeah, yeah, I prayed over it. Well, did you actually pray? Well, I, you know, I think it's really wild, but it's assumed and not actually done. So Abundant Life Christians, here's the thing. They will pray for decisions and pretty much all decisions and they'll pray for it more than once and they will pray with others in the decision. They'll pray with other believers, which goes to the next one, which is this, does godly counsel agree? So I'm now I'm gonna present that to people in my life. Abundant Life Christians uh, will, will go to people in their lives who they know are having their own relationship with God, that it's healthy and flourishing, and they'll bounce things off of people uh, who are, are their godly counsel. Two things about having godly counsel. Here's the thing. Wise counsel will tell you the truth when it's not popular. You hear me out there? And wise counsel will help you in the blind spots of your life. That's why it's so important to have others in your life. And here's the last one. It's do I have peace? Okay, now, this is the last one. It is not the only one, everybody, because I think that's where a lot of us get mixed up. Like, that's the only one that a lot of us go through. It's like, why have peace over it? Man, let me tell you why you don't want that to be the only one. Peace is still kind of a feeling sometimes, and it can be tricky to know whether or not you have your peace or God's peace, okay? You can't rely on that to be the only one. We, here's what I'm gonna tell you. You can make yourself pretty, feel pretty good about sometimes the wrong thing. Am I talking to somebody out there? Because I've heard some people go, no, I have peace about that. I'm like, there's no way that you have peace about that. There's no way that God wants you to do that. There's no way. So, but when you have the other three in place and then you feel peace, I would be safe to say that's God's peace and not what you ate last night. You hear what I'm saying, everybody? All right, so don't do that one first. So the good shepherd calls us, the good shepherd guides us. Now, for the next two on your notes there, uh, what we need to know is a few things that a shepherd actually carries uh, with him. Uh, but before we get into all those, I'm gonna give you the third thing that the good shepherd does. He also corrects us. The good shepherd corrects us. And so one of the things that a sheep would carry, and I don't, I, I mean, I know he wouldn't carry it today, but it's, it was a sling sling like you know think about like you know David and all that stuff but it was a sling and the sling was used to defend uh, attackers but here's also why they had it shepherds was actually use a sling for when the sheep would wander off because inevitably they will what he would do is he would like kind of throw a rock or something at it to hit something else to just kind of bang across it and say hey don't go there Hey, turn around. And the sheep go, oh, okay. you know, just turn around and, and do that. And so that's what it would do, like a warning shot to the sheep that they're going too far off. Uh, so that's one. And then the other thing that they carried was the staff. And actually they still carry the staff today. And that's the thing, that's the major same thing that you're thinking of, right? It's a candy cane, okay? Like, like it's the same thing they carry today. And it was used uh, like a prod on one end. And, and the other thing was actually used like a hook to hook the sheep's neck to kind of say, no, 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 you're coming with me. I gotta get that tick off or something like that uh, to do to correct the sheep and get the sheep, uh, you know, going what they want. And, and so one interesting thing that I read about is, is when the sheep go through a pen uh, or a gate, uh, they'll, and they do this today too, is that what they'll do is they'll lower that staff down as they go through. And what it does is it forces sheep to slow down. And when they do it, it allows the, the shepherd a chance to actually look over the sheep and make sure that there's nothing needs to be fixed for each individual sheep. I found that really neat to think about because that's what Jesus does for us as well. He just wants you to slow down a little bit. 
He wants to guide you. He wants to correct you. He wants to say, hey, hey, hold on a second. Let me see what's going on there. And, and he just wants to check in on our lives. That's how the Holy Spirit works through us. That's why he said, man, you're gonna have something amazing when I go. You're gonna have the Holy Spirit. And that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. And, and whether you know this or not, here's the thing. God is always subtly, subtly correcting us all the time. He does it directly. He also uses people in your lives. You ever notice that? Sometimes you're like, wow, that was, that was too specific for that being a chance. Like that person said that to me, right? It's a, it's a scripture that you just come across. It's a message that you hear that you're like, man, that was just for me. God does that all the time to help his sheep. And so, uh, and, and so it's like a rock right in front of you. Right? It's like, rock. hey, don't, don't go in that direction. Hey, go, come over here, it's safer over here. And, and so there is always, the abundant life Christian always knows that there's correction happening. And here's what they also know. They also know that not all correction is comfortable, but it actually is always for the greater cause. The writer of Hebrews says it this way, that, that not all discipline is enjoyable uh, while it's happening. It's painful, it's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. And so I actually found, I actually found this interesting uh, about the staff as well. So the staff wasn't just used to correct. And I think about this too with Jesus. Uh, the shepherds also used the staff to comfort. They, they almost like brush it along the sheep's side and the, br- and the sheep love that because they know, oh, the shepherd's right next to me. And, you know, I think a lot about that on how Jesus corrects us, just how he corrects us. He's like, no, I love you. I, I care for you. And it should be comforting to know that I'm not just letting you go over there. I'm not letting you just, just, just fly off the handle on these areas. So even though he corrects us, it, he's showing that he loves us in that. And here's the last one. Here's the last one. That the good shepherd protects us, that he protects us. And so the last thing that the shepherd would carry uh, was a rod, was a rod. I don't know where they carry it today. Probably a gun, I don't know, uh, probably. But the rod was like a two foot deal like that. And it would have a big club on the end. It would be spiked and stuff like that. And so they use that for like wolves. They, like, they ain't fighting wolves with their hands, man. They're like getting that club and they're like, come on, bring it, right? They're like, and the other thing that I learned is that they can learn how to throw that thing like a Frisbee and knock the living daylights out of stuff. Like that, that, that that's pretty cool. I'm like, man, I kind of want to be a shepherd now. But anyways, probably have guns today. That'd be a little easier in a club. You know what I'm just saying? But um, they would do that. And, to, and, and so they would protect the sheep with their presence, with this, with club. And, and so that's how Jesus wants to be with us, that he protects us, everybody. Listen, with his presence. And here's what I wanna tell you again, we all need that. We all need that because we will all go through valleys. We will all have hard times in our life where we will want to feel and know the protection of the shepherd right next to us. You hear what I'm saying? That's who he wants to be, that he's there, that he's fighting for us, he's protecting us, that he's defending us, that he's shielding us from all these other elements that are going on outside. I love how David puts this. I'm just gonna end this way with Psalm 23. It says this, that that even though I walk through the darkest valley, I'll fear no evil for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, there they are, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so here's what I want to do, everybody. This is where I'm gonna stop today with this step of the abundant life. So with the good shepherd, with Jesus, here's what he wants to do. This is what he wants to do. This is who he wants to be in your life. This is what he's offering to do for you, that he wants to call you. And then he wants to guide you onto the right path. He wants to correct you and he wants to protect you. And everybody listen to me. What we need to realize is that for us to be in the abundant life, we have to be a sheep. That you have to be a sheep. We can't bring any of this stuff in if we act like anything else. And I think there are so many of us that are still acting like something else and we're not humbly accepting who Jesus says we actually are. But you cannot be a sheep here, but not there in your life. Because here's the thing, in the relationship with a shepherd and sheep, here's what you gotta catch. Sheep don't negotiate with the shepherd. They don't negotiate with the shepherd. They don't say, well, I'll follow you here in this life, but, but not over here. I'll go on my own with this and that. No, the sheep will yield. The sheep will totally allow the shepherd to do the shepherding. This is a difference. This is a difference, everybody, with abundant life Christians and other Christians. They don't negotiate with the good shepherd. They don't say, well, I'll follow you in this set of circumstances, but I'll call my own shots when it comes to things like my finances or my marriage or my lifestyle or how far I take this believe in you thing. They don't do that. They don't do that. They become completely dependent on Jesus and his role as their good shepherd. You know, I know for so many of you out there, 
You're a sheep, you know you're a sheep, you accept it. You, you've humbly come and say, no, I'm gonna surrender over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this over to Jesus. And you're allowing Jesus to be the shepherd in your life. And I think some of you here today, I know it. I know it for a fact. You're still relying a little too much on yourself in this life. You're trying to shepherd yourself in some areas of your life. And let me tell you from experience, it's not the good path. It's not where you wanna be, whether you believe it or not. You are not the good shepherd in your life. You are not. It's a burden that we're, and here's what I wanna tell you. It's a burden you're not meant to carry. You gotta just let that go. You're not meant to be the shepherd in your life. It will wear you out because you're not meant to be your own shepherd because the abundant life, here's what I wanna tell you. The abundant life is not based on just a little bit that God does and then you do a bunch of stuff to shoulder it. That's, that's the reverse of it. You don't do anything and he does everything. So why would him being your shepherd be any different? It's nothing that you do. So if you want to find this life, if you want to find this full life, this abundant life that he wants, you, gotta, you just got to trust God. You got to lean in and you got to let go. You need to rest in God. You need to rest in him. Because whether you like it or not, you are a sheep. But let me tell you why that's not so bad. It's not so bad because Jesus is telling you that the good shepherd, that's your joy. He's your joy or you're his joy. He wants to protect you. He wants to guide you to the, to the right waters. He wants to put you into the best pasture. He wants to encourage you. He wants to see you become strong and healthy. He treasures you and he wants to take care of you. And here's the question that I wanna leave us with today. Will you let him? Will you let him? Let me pray for us. God, thank you for this lesson. Jesus, thank you for giving us the lesson about shepherd and sheep. I gotta admit, when I came into this, I, I had some um, already sort of prearranged thoughts about what sheep are and, and what you meant by that, but I'm so grateful for the study that I did. Thank you for guiding me in those right places to help me see, uh, A, that I'm a sheep. And man, I gotta do some work in my life. I gotta have some humility and some, some acceptance of some of those things in the areas of my life that I'm still trying to shepherd myself. But it, as soon as we realize we're sheep, we'll just let go. We'll, we'll just lead in on you. We'll let you shepherd us, God. And I think that's why you showed us that, Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit in us that, that is constantly pushing us toward that, constantly leading us. And, and what I do know is that you will never drive us. You will lead us. You'll guide us. We have to let you. And so right now for every believer here, every, every person who, who loves you and knows you as their savior, I pray that we could just have a moment here and just have a challenge a little bit to understand what it really does mean to be a sheep and what it really does mean to let you be the good shepherd and to understand that there are so many other shepherds out there calling our name and, and it sounds almost right, but you're the only good one, the only good one. You're the only one worth following because we are, we are your treasure. We are your joy, God. Thank you for saying that to us. Thank you for allowing that um, to be something that you have for us. We love you and we need you and we pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hey, I hope you had a great Sunday. Again, if you need any prayer, we have a prayer team up here that's available. Anything you need prayer for, we'd love to do that, pray for you. Other than that, we'll see you next week for the next step of the abundant life. See you next Sunday, everybody.